summertime is fun time for the whole family and of course that certainly includes our pets. But just as we humans need to take safety precautions during the dog days of summer, pets need special attention as well. We don't want to neglect that fact. Dr. Carrie Fitzpatrick is with us today to discuss pet safety. Welcome Carrie, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, it's great to be here. It's so nice to have you and of course to have Pablo. He's my little Pablo, we he's love Pablo. Asleep here. Pablo is about the bling, I don't know if everybody has seen the, the, the blingy uh, leash right here. I love this. Yes, he's got his bling right on him right here. So. He looks super fab. Fitting in here and he's got his Hawaiian uh, lei on as well to celebrate <laughs> summer. We went for a little walk this morning in the nice cool temperatures. That so is before awesome. Before it gets hot this morning. Yes, well I wrapped especially for the Snoop Dogg. So <laughs> there you go. Now I want to ask you a question because you know you just saw the weather. You saw That's those right. temperatures climbing, right? So what I want to ask you is how long does it actually take for a dog's body to climb to a deadly level when we reach these kind of temperatures? It actually doesn't take very long. Really? Uh, if it's 95 outside or even 100 degrees, it can take as little as 5 to 10 minutes for your car to heat up to 120. Oh my gosh. That's that's a deathly temperatures for your pet in your car. So wow. definitely don't leave your pet in the car, even if you're just running into the grocery store for mm -hmm. a few minutes. That's a good Those point. few minutes always turn into a few extra minutes at the checkout line, and then it means a deadly experience for your dog. That's right. I mean, yesterday was about 99 degrees. My car said 107 when I got into it, and I thought about that. I thought if I had a pet sitting in that car. So if you were, let's say it's you already know this rule, you already know, but let's say you're in a parking <laughs> lot and you see a dog in distress in oh, another vehicle. Oh, that is vehicle. the worst experience. Yes. Uh, the best thing that you can do is alert the, the officials at the store or at the mall that you're at. Okay. Uh, especially a police official or call even 911. Really? Uh, I don't recommend uh, breaking down a window in the car. <laughs> um, however, you know, especially if the dog is panting in the car and you can see the sweat dripping from his Aww. tongue, um, they are de in, in need of some help in the car. Certainly. Definitely. Yeah, and I mean, it's such it's, that's such a good point you make because I think a lot of people lose sight of that. And of course, heat stroke is a big issue. So let's talk a little bit about that. What are the, some of the symptoms to look for with heat stroke in a dog? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. If you're outside and you're running and it's 100 degrees outside, uh -huh. your pet cannot sweat. Uh, this is Pablo here. And the only way that he can sweat is through his paw pads very minimally or by panting. Mm -hmm. So if you think that your pet has had heat stroke, when they lay down and they don't stop panting and they keep panting for a while, even if you have a, a regular thermometer around the house just taking their temperature, if it's 101 or I'm sorry, 103 or above, uh -huh. they're at risk of having heat stroke and take them to your veterinarian immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a very deadly uh, uh, syndrome with these guys. They can develop something called disseminated intravascular coagulation. Okay. Uh, which is very deadly, very fast for them. Wow. Uh, so they do need to see a pet. Excessive panting, excessive sweating. Okay. Their heart rate can get very elevated. Really? Uh, and so just a few tips at home. A normal heart rate for your pet dog if he's resting or yes. if he's just coming in after a walk, you know, a little dog like Pablo, he can have a heart rate of 120 after oh a walk gosh. this morning. Wow. Uh, well, that's pretty normal for these guys. Is if it? it gets up to around 200 consistently and after five minutes of trying to cool them down, it does not go down, you need to bring them into your veterinary immediately. Great advice. And yeah. speaking of that, you know, you're talking about these walks. What would ideally be the best time of day to walk your dog when we're talking about this summer heat? Great question. And actually, Pablo enjoys his walks in the morning oh. or in the evening time when I get home from work. So sweet. I mean, yes. and really, I mean, the nice thing, I, one thing I love coming from a place where there was so much humidity, it is so nice that at least when the sun goes down, even though there's still that heat, it's that dry heat. So it's not as sweltering. Right. Well, it, it, uh, even here, even though we are dry and it doesn't feel as hot. In the afternoon time, these guys' paw pads can also burn off on this on the pavement mm -hmm. or on the cement. So definitely, if you're taking your pet out and it's very hot outside, make sure that you have protective wear for their paw pads. Very good point. If you're going to take them outside in the middle of the day, that's a great point you make. And I also want to talk a little bit about if the dog is your running partner. Okay, so a <laughs> lot of people, their dog is their running partner. So should summer runs be off limits altogether? Well, uh, you'd have to ask Pablo that question <laughs> as he went for a run this morning. <laughs> but we, we very typically take our runs in the morning time. Okay. Um, in the evening time, you have to watch out because even at 8 o'clock, it's still about 86 degrees True. outside. No, last night it was uh, for sure, so it's still pretty hot out. Okay. But in the morning times are the best time to take your pet for a run before the sun comes up. Okay. Uh, and in the evening time around dusk is a great time as well. Great. Definitely not in the middle of the day. And if you do take your pet out in the middle of the day, sunscreen can get, be a great precaution for them. That's exactly what I was going to ask because you look at a dog like Pablo who has maybe thinner hair not as you know not as much of a coat so right. what I always wonder is 
when you have a dog with thinner hair, you do want to put sunscreen? Most definitely. And I saw a, uh, a poodle in the other day. <laughs> he had a nice shave down haircut for the summertime. Okay. Except that it exposes all their skin. Good point. Uh, there are FDA approved sunscreens for pets now. However, if you just want to go to the grocery store and pick one up, um, you can pick up, especially the bullfrog or the okay. spray ones are pretty good. The non-greasy uh, uh, sunscreens for your pet Great. Um, 30 or higher is recommended and See, who uh, would think of that? a lot of people don't even think of that I'm oh so they glad definitely you said get that. burned and I have definitely taken off skin cancer wow. caused by the Sun Wow and these little guys you know Pablo's a little darker so he's a little more protected however if you have a yellow lab or a lighter colored poodle or uh -huh. uh, a lighter colored dog the nose oftentimes is pink and that is very susceptible to sunburn wow. so I, I, I even tried putting zinc oxide on Pablo last night <laughs> I would However, he was not that. the best patient for that he, he definitely was trying to rub it off on the carpet and his paws were up there and it got all over him. So you know, if your dog can tolerate it, I, I recommend the zinc oxide on the nose most definitely advice. for outside during the sun. I'm so glad you said that. And the last question I really want to ask you is regarding water. How oh, often yeah. should we actually water the dogs if we're hiking or wa taking those walks? Um, you know, they actually make those uh, carry-on dog water bottles that have a fold-out little tray or trough for them to drink out of. Yes. Uh, you know, if you're taking them in, in the hot summer heat uh -huh. outside, every five minutes stop and give your pet water. And you can take the water and splash it on the ears and splash it on the paws to help cool them down as well. Such valuable advice, Carrie. Let's tell all our viewers where they can find you because we certainly love to ask our experts <laughs> for these questions. Well, thank you. It's ABQ Pet Care. We're located at 9032 Montgomery Northeast. We are open seven days a week, oh, and wow. we are open late uh, during the weekdays. There's three of, us, three of us there, my dad, Dr. Tim Fitzpatrick, myself, and Sylvia Rodriguez. And you can always see Pablo there, and you can also catch me this Sunday on 770 KKOB at 1 o'clock if you want to call me in on the radio station with your questions. Fabulous. It is so nice to have you here, Carrie. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. And thank you, Pablo. You are quite a good <laughs> guest, if I do say so. He's Very well good. behaved, and I won't be putting zinc on him because clearly that will He does not like it. Not be his favorite thing. <laughs> In the meantime, stay with us. We've got a couple of urban cowgirls right here on New Mexico Style.